Welcome to the People, Passion, and Purpose podcast, where you will hear from creative small business owners in the trenches every single day, talking story, talking lessons, talking failures, talking truth. I'm your host, Nina L. Kovner. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome Stacy Rackham to the podcast. Stacy is the owner of Mint Haircrafting in Royal Oak, Michigan. A colorist, educator, fur mama, and awesome leader. Welcome Stacy. Hello, thank you for having me. I'm so stoked you're here. And I know we got we got to get this out of the way right in the beginning. This is the first time you've done a podcast. How are it you feeling? Is. Well, um, I know that we've talked about it before, but I, um, I'm excited about it. I've been a consumer of podcasts forever, and um, it's something that I've gained a lot of just insight and wisdom from, from just listening to different people's thought processes, and it's something that I use to start my day. So I feel like what better way to continue to contribute to that than to participate in the platform. That's awesome. Well done. I know this isn't easy and um, I applaud your courage. So thank you. Thank you for saying yes. So let's talk about your business journey. How long have you owned Mint Haircrafting and why did you open it? Yeah, so um, it'll be three years in May of 2019. So we're just coming up on that three-year anniversary. Um, I always knew that I wanted to do something great in my career, and I didn't always exactly know what that was. But I remember in cosmetology school, I had written down a list of five things I wanted to accomplish in my first um, 10 years behind the chair, and one of them was to own my own business. I didn't know what that meant, um, but that was something that was on a sheet of paper. Oh, Um, my God. Talk about intention (laughs) setting. I mean, I guess so. I didn't know that's what I was doing. I just knew that that's what was suggested to do. Like at that point in my career, they would always talk about writing down your goals and that, you know, if you hold on to them, it'll move you towards that. I didn't understand, like, I guess how to move the needle with that. But um, as as my journey into education um, became became part of my career path, I started to understand more of like, just, I guess, what wasn't known in terms of business when it came to salons. I think a lot of people open salons and not thinking about them as businesses. Mm. And so I just started to, to take in everything I possibly could about business. Um, my, one of my sales reps got me connected with a ton of resources to help me understand like profit and loss statements and, benchmarking and KPIs and things that like I didn't really understand um, as just working behind the chair. It had never really been explained or broken down to me. So that was part of my journey into understanding how to, I guess, connect like the business aspect to working behind the chair. And ultimately, it took me to the path where I wanted to open a space that I could um, just help develop people in their career in the beauty business and, and use our industry as a platform for great career success. I love that. And I love that you had that awareness to do that work, to do that, that business work. And for those of you that uh, don't know what KPI is, it stands for key performance indicator, which is a way to determine how you're going to measure quantitatively your success. Um, So I think that's fucking inspiring because (laughs) I know that that's probably helped you a ton. Um, and and it's just it's refreshing as a business sure. coach. <laughs> uh-huh. I love hearing that. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. So I was looking at the Mint Haircrafting Instagram yes. and you mentioned in the bio that you are an inclusive salon. What does that mean to you and why do you believe that matters? So. Over the last few years, there's just been a lot more awareness in my personal life, along with my friends and the people that I hold close to me, um, that there really was a disconnect between really like, I guess, fair quality services available to all guests, no matter where they live at in their journey of whether it's their orientation or their sexual identity. And I didn't really understand that as as a straight woman. (laughs) And so I had never really understood, like I never had known that that would be anything other than what someone would experience would be a positive experience inside a salon or my salon. 
Um, and so it became more of a conversation over the last few years. And I think that um, I know that we've spoken about it quite a bit in like in a school, which was mm -hmm. super supportive. And I have a couple of people on my team who have really strong, passionate feelings towards towards inclusivity as well. And they helped to really cultivate and move that forward for all of us. So um, it just brought a lot of awareness to us. And the community that our my business is in is a is a pretty progressive, very open minded, welcoming community. So it's something that I maybe I almost kind of kept myself in a bubble, not realizing that others may not have always had that experience. So it's been great having that just awareness inside our salon. It's been awesome for our guests because we definitely when you put your foot like in, in the sand and you say like, this is what we believe in. Some people are like, heck yeah, that's awesome. And some people, you know, it doesn't align with their own values and they can move on. And so it's been great for us because we have stronger relationships with the guests that believe in what we believe in. So it's been, it's been really wonderful. I had a guest of mine um, that didn't know that we were really moving towards announcing, I guess, if you will, that we were an inclusive salon, but had reached out to me um, that they were transitioning genders uh, back in November, had reached out to me, somebody who I had gone to school with and just said, hey, I, I remember you always being really nice and I'm sharing something really important with you because I need someone to help me and I don't know who to talk to. And that. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That was super powerful for me because, um, pardon me, it was powerful because I guess just based on our experiences in the past, like 25 years, that person felt comfortable enough to, to communicate that with me. And so our entire team has like really helped this individual work through, you know, their process as they're working through with their family and their loved ones. Um, and they're making the decision that's right for them. And, you know, where they've always wanted to, to really be at home. So, so it's been pretty cool. Um, and it was, it's way more profound than anything I could have, I guess, like putting it into your bio, like, you're like, okay, that that's great. Like, this is what we believe in. But then when you start to experience that and you see that you're the work that you do has such far reaching capacity or like capabilities, it's, it's, it's like a different, I don't know. I'm a different person from that experience. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't. Should we have ended with that? Oh my gosh, we're both like. Uh, um, are you working with our friends at the Dress Code Project? Um, I have looked into what they have. Um, some of the resources that are available. We are on the Strands for Translocator. Um, currently, that is who who one of our stylists has helped us uh, sync up with. Wonderful. Um, but I have brought in some of the dress code project, um, just some of the resources that are available through their social media um, for a conversation. And it's been helpful um, because it has definitely been, it's been a journey and it's been a process to help others understand why it's important to, to be inclusive. So, so that's been really helpful. Hold on a minute. I'm just, I'm a little upside down um, this morning. <laughs> I'm not sure what is happening with me. Okay, so we're talking, I, you know what? I think it's this conversation that's just got me like, yeah, I'm like <laughs> super emo. Okay, all right, come back, Nina, come back. It's okay. The first time that someone came across us on, on the salon locator and came in for a service, like that experience alone, like it kind of, it like kind of shook me because I didn't, again, like I didn't realize this yeah. person drove like 50 miles to come see us. I just didn't, I had no idea like how, how much that could truly matter to somebody. It's, it's incredible. And it, yeah. it, it says so much about the fact that, yeah, that's the reality. That's mm -hmm. sadly the reality that yeah. there are not enough safe spaces for um, marginalized communities in all, all ways. We did an awesome podcast with Kristen Rankin, who's mm -hmm. uh, the founder of the Dress Code Project. And, mm -hmm. and for those of you that want to learn more on being an ex inclus inclusive, safe salon, um, you can um, find the Dress Code Project on Instagram at 
the dress code project. So I just, I didn't want to mess up their um, Instagram name. Yeah. Okay. So I love that. I love that obviously for the obvious reasons. What I also love about this story is it's, it's such a great example of really having clarity around your brand and standing for something and Mm -hmm. understanding your audience and, and being okay with not being for everyone. And, you know, as as you know, I know, you know, um, but for, for everyone listening, um, you know, the world's changing and (laughs) duh, but one of the things when it comes to marketing and, and, and brand is that, We want to know what you stand for and you get to choose what that is, of course, as the brand owner, as a leader, Um, but we want to know. And, you know, the millennials and Gen Z are purpose driven and they are going to be attracted to and latch on to purpose driven businesses. And again, you get to decide, you the owner, um, get to decide what that is. But um, standing for something has impact on so many levels, um, both, of course, a societal impact and in in caring for those that 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 need safe spaces, but also, you know, there's that business impact. So I'm proud of you. Congratulations. I think it's fucking awesome. So Okay, so now I think I'm a little grounded. <laughs> I, I I don't always cry on the podcast, but, you know, I, I am a crier. Okay, having been doing this leadership thing for a while now, Stacy, can you share some of your biggest lessons so far in these three oh, years? Yeah, wow. Well, it has not been easy. I have learned a lot. Um is, is I've learned so much. And I feel like every single day, like I just have to be really like the student of, of my people in some ways. Um, and, and hear what they say, hear what they're not saying. Um, because sometimes that like the silence can be really powerful as well. And it's hard, um, because there's days where, you know, I definitely want to just be, I just want to be behind the chair yeah. and take care of my guests and be dialed in there and not be, um, and not have to like, I, I don't want to say like adult, but you know, yeah, be adult. the individual who, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Be the, be the individual in the room who, you know, has to let go of outcomes, but you know, be open to, to feedback and hearing things that I don't always feel the best. Um, sometimes that's hard to like check my ego at the door that, you know, like in a, in a good way, but to know that I don't know all the answers and that sometimes the answers are actually, you know, inside the the brains of the, of the people that I, that I get to surround myself with every single day. So, um, in terms of like specific lessons, I really feel like we do one-on-ones monthly and that has been huge. So, I've had to take a step back from taking as many guests as I was taking and accept the fact that like, I'm not going to be the highest earner behind the chair any longer. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's hard. Yeah. You know? It's big. It's yeah. big. That was hard. Um, because I was attaching at one point, like my success to like how I was performing behind the chair, but my role as the owner isn't, isn't that. So, um, so we schedule it one-on-ones. We have those scheduled now, I think for the rest of the year, they're like 30 to 45 minute one-on-ones that we check in at the beginning of every month. We go over numbers, um, but we also go over like what's working in their personal life and what's not working and what we need to do to kind of work through that. So that's been helpful. Um, I like to ask my team when they're taking like a vacation or something for themselves next, because that was never really something that I've ever done for myself. And I had a fear that I would lose a clientele if I took time out of the salon. I understand now that that's not true, right? but, (laughs) but my first like seven years, six years behind the chair, like I, I was afraid to, to do any kind of extended holidays or to not be in the salon on Saturdays. So, um, working with my team through that and then really just taking in what they have to share because a lot of personal stuff comes up. And I think that's probably 
where we've grown the most has been through some of their personal situations and and helping them get to the other side. I love that. And I, I also love that you, by asking them about their vacation plans, it, it has so much impact in, in, in showing how much you give a shit about them. You know, in a world that still has this kind of workaholism mentality, this hustle mm-hmm. mentality, you know very well that mm-hmm. that's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and to really care and know that that this is important to me that you take care of yourself. So get mm-hmm. that get that vacation in. I love that. I love that so much. So speaking of your awesome team, you work with a lot of young people, right? Mm-hmm. Out of beauty school. How do you help them navigate anxiety and confidence issues? Well, that's probably what shows up. Um, I think that that shows up the most, like those first few years outside of being being in the salon, because you go from an environment that is supposed to be a learning environment to this world from, and I'm going off of personal experience as well, where I think the self-imposed expectation is that you have to know everything and that you can't make mistakes because people are now paying for your time. And that's hard. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that was really hard for me to work through. So, um, we, again, I think just going back to like our one-on-ones, um, checking in with where they're at with different things that come up, um, I have to remind myself that they see me in a different light than I see myself. And so sometimes that means that we stay late and we have conversations. Um, we do some personal development stuff. So I have a few people on my team currently that have on their own picked up some Brene Brown stuff. So mm. I have someone who's listening to dare to lead on her own. Love it. Love <laughs> which it. Which is pretty cool. Um, I share podcasts with them that have been helpful for me. And then what most recently we started to do is with our new talent that are in development, um, a senior stylist that has that, that new talent supporting them or assisting them in the salon now dedicates three to four hours a week to assisting the new talent with the guest. Oh, I so love that's kind that. of shifted some things. Yeah. And that's wow. been awesome so far. That's really cool. So I don't know if it's it's necessarily like solving or helping them through their anxiety. Sometimes I think it's just helping them know that it's okay and it's normal that what they're experiencing and that like, I think for myself, I can say that I suffer from anxiety or that I've survived through some anxieties. And sometimes that can help drive us towards something with a better outcome. And so I think sometimes just the framework around it can be really helpful um, to reduce like the shame that you have something that you have, you know, unreasonable fear around and knowing that it's there, it's present. It's okay. We can still work through it. I love that. And I also feel like it's like if I'm lacking confidence or anxious, which I mean, I actually did do hair in the 80s and I was a new stylist at one time. And I remember that anxiety. Um, It's nice to have someone by your side, Mm -hmm. you know, that just alone to just know that like having that senior stylist be assisting that new talent. It's like, yeah, someone's got my back. and, And that I feel can have incredible impact. I love that. What does purpose mean to you? Oh my goodness. Well, (laughs) I have, I have my notebook from when I wrote down what my purpose was from when, um, before I opened the salon and I'm going to see if I can, um, what I shared at that time, um, was that my purpose was to enlighten and elevate and strengthen others through the platform of the beauty industry. What I think that that means as I got, all encompassing is that just knowing something that lights you up every day and brings you joy and aligning yourself and your life to support that and to have that as like a consistent experience. So I love like connecting with other people and talking with them about their dreams. And so I, I feel like being in ownership or like in leadership inside my space is like, it just makes sense. Cause I kind of get to do that all the time, which is fun. Um, but yeah, it took a long time to figure out what that purpose was. It's, it it's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
But, it evolves. Yeah. I mean, it totally evolves. And I know that, you know, it just as humans, we're so attached to getting like clear definitions and meanings of everything. And the reality is we don't always have that. And sometimes things are murky for a while. And mm-hmm. I love that you have found that clarity and have created a space that that you can live it. I did want to ask you, though, you, you said, you know, about doing something that brings you joy. Living your purpose is not all joyous, though, is it? God, God, no, (laughs) no. I mean, like I've been, I've been diving into like a more consistent yoga practice because I want to be, I I just, I want to be a more well-rounded, I guess, version of myself. Um, and that rocks my soul some days. Like there's been quite a few days, like on my yoga mat that like all of a sudden I have started to cry and I'm like, what's happening. Um, and it's because like that stuff that you, even though like I, I have great drive to, to have those experiences with my team, there's some days that are really, really, really heavy and hard for me. And I come home and I'm like, why did I, like, I have to be honest. I'm like, why did I do this? Yeah. Am I cut out for this? Yeah. (laughs) Yep. And, you know, I think it's important to remember that is that we all do that. That is that you are not unique in that. And I, I mm-hmm. sometimes it's that, you know, it's that like a, that quote on Instagram. It's the expectations that fuck us up the most or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was mess us up. But of course, I have to say fuck us up. Um, <laughs> but it, it's true. And so living our purpose, it's not all rainbows and fucking unicorns. And mm-hmm. but it is that deep that deep sense of purpose and knowing that you are on this planet to do what you're here to do. That makes all of the other stuff worth it. Before we, before we finish up, you know, we got to talk about Walter. Mm, Yes. My (laughs) cute little chug. (laughs) I wish we were on video now so everyone could see Walter, but they'll see Walter on your, on your social pages when we show this. Yeah. If they, if they go to our salon page or my page, they'll see him for sure. So who's Walter? Tell us about Walter. Uh, so Walter is a rescued Chihuahua pug mix. I didn't know that that was a thing, that they're called chugs, but they're called chugs. Um, and he was just like a super malnourished, like homely looking dog that was underweight, had tons of parasites. Um, and he, I had brought him into my home before my my senior dog had passed away about six months before my dog Farva had passed and having Walter with me through that process is such a gift. Um, but I'm also, I had the opportunity that I get to take him with me to my business every single day. And that's incredible. And so I get to handle my best friend, which is great. Um, our guests love spending time with him. They get lap hangs and, Aww. and just get to spend time with him. So like if someone's color is processing, sometimes he finds himself like over by the processors, you know, kind of hanging out, seeing if they're going to give him like a snack or a treat, but it's cool to see how people light up when they see him. And a big part of when people come into the salon now that is they ask about him and that's, that's great. Cause I, I'm all about, um, you know, rescue and, and taking care of, of the fur babies out of the world. So it, it kind of has tied in, I guess, like to a deeper part of like who we are as a brand as well. So that's great. And now my eyes are full of liquid again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love Walter's mouth. Yeah. Cause he has a severe <laughs> underbite. Um, and so he, he does. Oh, and well, he knows we're talking is. about him. Yeah, he does. I'm sorry about that. No, no, I'm happy. I'm happy. <laughs> Hi, Walter. We love you. So, yeah, you guys definitely have to go check out. You guys just did a photo shoot, which is beautiful. We um, did. So definitely go check that out. We did. It was extra. Like a so friend extra. of mine. Yeah, he well, my friend, has, he, do, he does professional headshots and he's like, you can bring Walter with you. And I was like, Okay, well, then I will do that. So the headshots that I liked the best were the ones where I was with my dog. The other ones I felt kind of like posy and it just didn't feel like me 100 percent. But but, you know, oh, they're the best pictures, too. Favorite quote. Let's talk about your favorite quote. You know, I think it's a quote by Gandhi, but I'm not quite sure. I just like what it represents, which is to be the change that you wish to see in the world. Um, So Mm -hmm. I just try to remind myself of that every day that, you know, 
those are the little things that we do. Like if we see garbage, we pick it up. And, you know, if we see someone walking to the door, we grab the door for them and those little tiny things, but, it, but showing that we care about like our, our planet, our environment, the people that we interact with, the people we don't know. Um, I think it can make the world a better place. So, yeah. I love that. Where can we find you on the internet? Um, so you can come across my Instagram. It's Stacy S T A C E Y R A C K H A I R. Um, that's my personal professional Instagram. Um, and then mint hair crafting's Instagram as well. I love it. Stacy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity to, to spread past my, <laughs> my comfort zone. You did for, awesome. For that. So thank you very much. Oh, we're so grateful for you. And thank you everyone for listening. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. To learn more about Passion Squared, you can visit us at passionsquared.net. You can find us on the gram and on Facebook at Passion Squared. And be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. We're so grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. Have an awesome day, guys. Love you.